Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how you can pull in Berkshire Hathaway Holdings data into, into Excel using Power Query. And from there, I'm also going to show you how you can calculate the change in position from whether it's a quarter or a year or however long of a time frame you want to look at. So for starters, the first thing that I'm going to need to do is go to the SEC website for Berkshire Hathaway. So if you just type in Berkshire Hathaway, you know, SEC, you'll find something that looks like this. And so I'm going to type in for filing type 13F just to filter by that, hit search. And now, so I'll only see the 13F filings. So you see the most recent one as of, as of today is November 15th, 2021. So if I click on the documents button here, I'll get a list of some files. The main one I'm going to be looking at is the information table, the one that has an HTML extension. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see this is a nice table format. It shows me, you know, all the shares that they that they owned as of this period and the different companies listed here. So I'm going to take this URL up here. I'm going to copy it, control C, and I'm going to go back into Excel and under the data tab go to this from web button and I'm going to load this into Power Query. So I'm just going to paste that link into there and hit OK. And now Power Query is going to do its thing and going to tell me, OK, I've got the document, table zero, table one and table two. And table two is the one that uh, I was looking at and looked looked reasonable. So. I'm not going to load this straight away. I'm going to hit the transform data button first. And the reason being is there are some changes I want to make to this, this table before I load it in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to remove these first two, first two rows because I don't need, I don't need these. So on, on the home tab in here, there's an option to keep rows and also to remove rows. So I'm going to hit remove top rows. I'm going to select two because I want the first two rows gone. Done. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push up this row one so it becomes the header because using column one, column two, column three, that's not going to be very helpful, especially if I'm doing calculations uh, with these fields later on. And so again, there's another convenient button right here in Power Query. Use first row as headers. And there we go. So now my headers are set up. Next thing I want to do is I want to group these items because I don't want, you know, all these items for American Express, all these for Apple. I want to be just be able to sum up the total. So again, there's another group by button that I'm going to use here. Do that. And so I'm going to group by the name of issuer and my new column is going to be total shares. Okay. And I'm going to use the sum function and I'm going to sum this PRN amount uh, field which shows me the number of shares. Okay, so I'm going to select that one, PRN amount, hit OK. And now as you can see now it's nicely nicely formatted where I've got the issuer of the company and the total shares. So just like that I've got a good starting point. So what I'm going to do is rename this query, right click, rename 2021-09-30 just so I see what period it's relating to. Next up, what I'm going to do is duplicate this because I'm going to create another query this time for uh, a, a different period. So I'm going to go back into to my browser here. I'm going to back out of here and let's say I want to look at, you know, let's say a, a year ago. So let's say November of 2020. Hit the documents button here, HTML, and copy that link over. So it gets back out of here and I'm just going to go in the source line here and see so you've got this HTTP address in here, delete that out, control V, put in my new link and you know, now that uh, should look a bit different. Yeah, those totals look a bit different, v 14 there we go. So now what I'm just going to do, rename this to 2020. And so now I've got my, my two queries set up. So from here, 
the the next step that I'm going to do is merge these two queries because I want to be able to compare, you know, to see what has changed from one period to another. Okay, so to merge queries, you know, it doesn't matter really which one I'm selecting here, but on main tab again, there's an option to to merge, and I'm going to select you know, 2020. So I've got 2021, 2020. And I'm just really connecting the issuers. Now, the key thing to, to do on, on here is make sure you select the full outer join. And the reason being is if I just pick the default, the left, I'm not going to include, you know, everything. And so if I want a complete picture of what Berkshire Hathaway has been buying as well as selling and including any positions that is completely liquidated, uh, a left outer join is going to miss that, right? Because it's only going to factor in you know if it's if, if it still has that right so i don't want that i want a full outer so i've got everything from both sides i'm going to hit okay and now i get this 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 field in here i'm going to click this button here to expand this and i can use the original column name as a prefix just so it's easy to differentiate so i'm going to leave that and hit okay and so now you can see i've got the name of issuer name of issuer the difference being this one has that prefix so it's helpful to know um helpful helpful to have that ticked off so that you know you can see you know what uh what uh, what query that relates to and by having that full outer join now i've got issue now i've i'm able to see these these null values which although in some cases may be problematic if i want to see you know what's changed and have everything that's that's fine i can address those those null values easily in fact one way to do that especially for the share since i'm going to do a calculation later i'm going to select these and hit replace values now i'm going to replace null with zero because in order to do a calculation i need these not to be null values okay so Next up, what I'm going to do is start my uh, start adding some calculated columns. The first one is actually just going to be a conditional call, and the reason being is I've got some null values for these name of issuers, which I, I don't want. So I'm going to change this first of all and call it company name, and say, okay, if the name of issuer equals null, then well, my output I want is to select the other column. So this is where that prefix comes in handy. So I know that that's the other field. Otherwise, if it's not null, then just select that same column. This is just to ensure that I don't have any null or blank values, right? So everything's filled in, okay? Next up, I'm gonna do a custom column, and this is just gonna be a straight calculation. So I'm gonna call this change in shares. And th all this is gonna do is take the total shares today minus the total shares a year ago. And there we go. We've got our change in shares, it's all in there. And the really cool thing about Power Query is, you know, I don't need these columns anymore, so I can delete them. Remove columns, done. And so now I've just got the company name and the change in shares hit the home button, and now we can close and load. And so now it's gonna update this table in Excel. And so I'm gonna switch over to the 2021 tab because this is where I actually did the, the merge query and I did my change in shares calculation. So one thing I can do right off the bat is maybe adjust this formatting so it's a bit easier to, to read and then sort from largest to small. So I can see where the big buys were, where the where the selling happened. And if I want to filter out the, the zeros, you know, that's easy enough to do. And I can get a quick snapshot of the big changes in in the company's holdings from from the past year. And so you can reposition this uh, the, this query as you like. For instance, if we go back to edit, all you really need to do is change the change that source step so that first step here just change that to the url that you want so if you want to look at a different period you know 
you can just do that in here. And all these all these steps, all this logic is going to be um, the same as long as everything is in the same sort of format. Now I don't know if you go back how 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 many years back if it's going to still be consistent, but as long as it's you've got the same headers, you've got the same sort of layout, then you can replicate this for future periods, past periods, you know, as long as it's all all matching up. So that's a quick uh, overview of you know using Power Query to to pull in this data from Berkshire's um, 13F filings, and um, yeah. So hope you found that useful, and uh, thanks for watching.